Welcome to the Battlefield Training Simulation, Commander. This scenario will help you get familiar with the basics of our command and control system. To get started, let's go over some basic camera controls for navigating the battlefield. To move the camera, hold down the right mouse button and drag the cursor in any direction. Move the camera now. Excellent. Objective complete. Throughout this training session, you can reference your objectives at any moment if you're having trouble figuring out what to do next. To access your objectives, click the flashing button in the top right of the screen. Next, we'll work on commanding units. We've granted you two squads of zone troopers. Begin selecting these units by moving your cursor over the zone troopers. Notice that your cursor changes to a selection cursor. While your cursor is over the unit, left click. Excellent. One squad of zone troopers is now selected. You can select multiple squads of units by left-clicking and dragging the mouse across them. Try selecting both squads of zone troopers by dragging a selection box across all of them. Both squads are now selected. To move selected units, move your cursor over empty terrain. You'll notice that it changes to a move cursor. This is a potential destination for your selected units. Some terrain, such as mountains and rivers, are not traversable and will give you a different cursor to inform you that you're not allowed to move units there. Issue a move command to your zone troopers into the designated area to the east by right-clicking on the terrain. Good work. Your troops are moving out. This is the shooting range. Time for some target practice. If your zone troopers are still selected, right-click on the target's down range and the zone troopers will fire on them. If your troops aren't selected, drag a box around the whole group and then open fire. Destroy all of the targets. All targets are destroyed. Excellent work, Commander. Notice that one of your Zone Trooper squads has a special symbol hovering above it when it is selected. This squad is now a Veteran Squad. There are three levels of veterancy. As squads rank up, they deal more damage and become less vulnerable to enemy attacks. Now move your Zone Troopers over to this damaged building. Order your men to destroy the structure. significantly longer to destroy the structure than the targets at the range. Zone troopers are very effective against infantry and light vehicles, but are not very efficient at destroying structures. In turn, certain tanks and heavy artillery may tear through structures, but may not be the most effective weapons against infantry. You'll need to pick the right unit for the enemy you're facing. Troop composition is an important part of commanding an army. Many units have special abilities. The Zone Troopers, for example, can use jump jets to boost themselves over obstacles and across rivers. Order your Zone Troopers to jump jet across this trench by selecting your Zone Trooper squads and left-clicking on the jump jets icon in the lower part of the unit portrait. You'll find it in the bottom right of your screen. Then left-click on a section of open terrain on the other side of the trench. Good work! Many units have special abilities and upgrades that you can use to great effect on the battlefield. Objective complete. Commander, you've been issued a Mobile Construction Vehicle, or MCV. This vehicle is the foundation for a new base and will allow you to build new structures. In the field, you'll be moving your MCV to a suitable area for base construction. Look for flat terrain. We've designated an area for you in this training simulation. Move your MCV to the designated area to begin base construction. Note that this large vehicle is defenseless and moves slowly, but it's heavily armored. You'll need to unpack the MCV before you can build a base. To do so, select your MCV and left-click on its unpack ability, again found at the lower right attached to the unit portrait. This will convert your MCV into a stationary structure called a construction yard. Good work. By unpacking your MCV, you've established ground control and can now place additional structures in the vicinity of your construction yard. Additional structures will extend your ground control, allowing you to expand your base to cover more ground. Your base will need power to function. Begin the construction of a power plant by left-clicking on the power plant icon in the build menu. Good, notice how your remaining credits decrease while the power plant is building. Each structure has a cost and build time associated with it. To find out how much a building costs and how long it'll take to build, move your mouse cursor over the building's icon in the build menu. The building is now ready. Note that the power plant button is highlighted, indicating that it's ready to be placed in the world. Left-click the power plant build button and move your cursor onto the terrain. 
the cursor will switch to a power plant icon and may be placed within the construction yard's build radius. Left click to place the structure. If the power plant icon turns red, you're either trying to build the power plant outside of your construction yard's ground control radius or you're trying to build it on impassable terrain. Good, now your base has power. Notice the power meter on the right side of your screen. Each structure you build needs power to work properly. If your base runs low on power, some buildings will stop working and others will work inefficiently. Buildings that stop working turn black. Now it's time to build a refinery so you can harvest Tiberium. Tiberium is an extremely valuable resource that can be refined and used to fund your operations. Build a refinery by clicking on the refinery icon. When it's ready, place your refinery in the same way you did your power plant. Construction complete. New construction options. Excellent. Note that the harvester unit automatically begins to seek out and collect Tiberium. Once the harvester has reached capacity, it'll return and unload its Tiberium for processing. You'll get credits when this happens. With your economy established now and power available, you can begin to build production structures. A barracks will allow you to train infantry. Build a barracks and place it on the terrain just like you did with your power plant and refinery. Construction complete. Objective complete. New construction options. Good work. Now you can start building an army. To access the list of infantry units that you can train, either select the barracks or click on the unit production tab now. You always have the option to click directly on the structure or simply use the tabs on the interface in the upper right. Click on the rifleman squad icon to train a squad of GDI riflemen. Click on the unit multiple times and you'll train multiple squads. Train three squads of riflemen. Rifle squad. Right you can pause production of a unit or structure by right-clicking on its icon while it's being built. If you left-click on a paused unit or structure, production will resume. If you right-click on a paused unit or structure, production will be canceled and any credit spent will be refunded. Good work, Commander. You've managed to build a base and train a small force of infantry. Now you'll fight a mock battle against another commander. He will command the red team and you will command the blue team. Objective complete. Riflemen, move out. The red team may attack at any moment. Before they do, garrison your riflemen inside this abandoned building. To garrison the building, select your squads and right-click on the abandoned building to send them in. Your units are now taking advantage of cover inside the building. While garrisoned, your troops can still fire out but are protected from enemy fire. Note that if the structure becomes severely damaged, your troops will be ejected. Here comes the red team. Enemy unit sighted. successfully defeated the Red Team Strike Force. To clear the garrison building, select the building and click on the Evacuate All button. Objective complete. Now it's time to build some more forces. When you feel you're ready, move your forces out into the field, find the Red Team's base, and destroy it. Yes, sir. Entering combat zone. What do you need? Punch it. Unit under attack. Unit lost. You've discovered the Red Team's base. Target their structures and take them down. Squad ready. Great job, Commander. You've learned all the basics you'll need to lead GDI forces into battle. You might try starting with the GDI campaign next, as it reinforces and builds upon the lessons you've learned in this training session.